Hello, and welcome back to the ACE Talks podcast, where we talk about Ecuador and a little more. And today's topic is going to dive into the a little more section, but it has to do with something that I mentioned in one of my most recent YouTube videos, talking about the whole crisis with the narcos and everything happening here in Ecuador. But before I start talking about that, I did want to make a mention that today I'm once again at the museum. It's been a while since I've been here and my last few videos in my main channel, I've been doing them at the park, but there have been some inconveniences with the park in the sense that I have to ask for permission to get a certain permission to be able to record there. But anyways, that's a whole different story. We're back at the museum and today you might have noticed that there's a little something different if of course you're watching this in the video podcast version, which is the fact that there is this very big comfortable chair here and it's not normally here. I did not ask for it to be placed here. It just was here. So I decided to take advantage of it and man, I wish I had a chair like this uh, or at least a better chair than the one I have. Hard plastic, the one I have at home, but I digress. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what happened uh, in regards, not what happened, but what I was talking about in my video where I explained at least my personal situation as an Ecuadorian here in Ecuador living through the crisis. But I'm not going to go too far into my situation because I want to make an emphasis on something that I said that I feel is a very big problem that's happening worldwide. That's why it's not so much centered on Ecuador, but I think it's something that's going on around the world. So the situation here it, and the comment that I made in that video was the fact that I talked about how my friend, she's earning less than a minimum wage. She's earning half, if not below or a little bit over. And it's not like she works, you know, part time or she has less work than anyone else. She's working the full complete hours and doing the job that she has to do. Unfortunately, it has no relation to what she studied to become. And that's the main talking point here today. That's the main thing that I want to talk about. The fact that there's a lot of people and not, I guess in this case, it's not purposefully that she doesn't want to work at this. It's not that. It's the fact that she's not being given an opportunity to work as the thing that she studied to be. And it's unfortunate because I realize there's a lot of situations where there are people who study something that they're not really interested in. And if they end up finishing the career, because there are cases that I've heard over here where some people go through a college degree and like they don't finish the college year, like they don't finish their whole education, but they reach, for example, the third year, which is like a year or two away from graduating. And then they decide to quit and change to something else. And they regret it always because of course you would. You just spent three years of your life, four years in, in the case that you have a five year education and they do that to switch and then afterwards, you know, start over from the beginning. And it, it feels like a big waste. You do gain a lot of knowledge from it. Of course, I'm not gonna say it's a complete waste and I know those people don't exactly think that either, but they feel that way because their surrounding leads them to feel that way. It's like you're with a group of friends and you're the only person who hasn't graduated and all your friends graduated. How would you feel? And it, it becomes even worse if they graduated and they're all working at the thing that they graduated to become. So it's like, what are you doing? Like what happened to you? So, you know, don't let that hold you down. That's a little bit of motivation I'm going to add into here. If that has been your situation, or that was, or if in some point that will be the situation of someone, then don't feel bad about it because always remember that we live life at our own pace. And even though I do realize that time is limited, it doesn't matter if you have to spend a little bit more time to reach your goals because that might end up being better than rushing into something that maybe wasn't your goal or rushing into completing your goal and then feeling empty because that's another thing that does happen. And before I forget it, because I, I do end up sometimes forgetting certain things. Sometimes we, we forget that it's not so much the goal achieving it. I mean, of course we all want to achieve our goals, 
But sometimes it's not just that. It's not just the goal, achieving the goal that makes us happy. It's the process in which we achieve our goals. If you achieve the goal of starting a business but had to sacrifice all your friends to do it, yeah, you're going to be happy because you started your business and maybe you're making a ton of money. But you lost your friends. You didn't do this with anyone. You're now alone doing this. And yeah, of course, you have your workers and stuff like that. I know those arguments are going to come and go all the time. But the point being that you kind of miss out on the process. While someone else who might also be starting a business decides to do it with their friends, it takes a little bit longer because maybe it's a little bit harder to organize everyone. But you're doing it with people you love, people you care about, people who care about you and love you. And you have a lot more fun doing it. And then when you have it, it's not like you're by yourself at the pinnacle of success. You're with your friends and you all get to enjoy the thing you built together. It's kind of like a, makes me think of a marriage. It's a process and when you get married, I'm assuming because I'm not married, once you get married, it's, it's the process that led you to that marriage. And if it was well done, then in that marriage, you're very happy. And if it wasn't, then well, you're very sad. But anyways, I'm getting really far off topic. Uh, but I did want to add in a little motivation because I feel that something else that I, I really enjoy doing, and maybe it's not noticeable in some of these episodes or even on my YouTube channel, uh, GMAs, is the fact that I like motivating people. You can do things, you just have to do things right. And even when I say do things right, there really isn't always a set path to doing things right. Like I said, you can go through the quick option of succeeding by yourself or you can walk, take it easy and succeed with your friends or with, you know, certain other things that you can't compromise on. But anyways, motivation aside, my personal ideals aside and things that I enjoy aside, going back to the topic. So my friend, she doesn't work at the thing that she studied to become. And that's unfortunate because she's my friend. And of course, I, I feel for her because even I get to work as the thing that I studied to be. I am a teacher and I studied to be a teacher. Not to say that my, my ideal dream, childhood dream was being a teacher, but it, at least I studied it and I became it. And if I wanted to get a job at a high school or at uh, an institution that another academy, they would have no trouble hiring me. I would have no trouble, I think, getting that job unless they're full, of course. I'm not even trying to brag about this, but it's just the fact that I've had so many years in teaching here. People know me as a good teacher here. And I sometimes even get messages for people asking me to help them out with something because that's just people believe in me when it comes to teaching English. And I can also teach, of course, moderate Spanish to people wanting to learn Spanish because I've learned it through the process and I know that if I were to teach someone I'd be able to guide them so it's not as stressful as it was for me when I was trying to learn it when I got to Ecuador. Going back into my friend not getting her job in the thing that she studied to become, it sucks. I mean there's, there's no other way to put it. it. It truly sucks. And it's not like she's the only one who goes through that. I even, I have some notes here. And um, there are people who, for example, they study to become doctors. And this is a typical reference that people make. There's a doctor or there are doctors who study to become doctors. And I'm pretty sure anyone out there who studied any medical field, not even just doctor, to be a nurse or to be a dentist, to be anything related to health, you know it's a complicated career, how much you have to study, how much time you have to dedicate, how expensive it can be. In Ecuador, we have free universities, of course, but not everyone gets into the free university because it's free, so everyone fights for it. And because of the same fact it's free, a lot of people believe it's bad. And that's not necessarily the case. It's just you might get more value from a university that's paid. There's better equipment, better infrastructure, and better things that just make it, I guess, a better experience for some people. But that doesn't always mean it's going to be great. I have a friend who, when I studied in the university, he was dedicated to studying. Like, that man here in Spanish, they say, come libros, which is book eater, or eat books, if you want to say it like that. But he was the kind of person 
who would get to the university and while he was walking up the, the little hill that you had to get up to get to, the, to get to our faculty, he would be either listening to audios about learning the language, English, French, because he specializes in those two, or he would be reading a book to practice his, his knowledge. And he graduated the university and even got a scholarship to go study I think, and work, or was, I think it was just work in France. When he came back, because he got that scholarship and because he did that, that he did the process, he actually got a job at the university. His case is exceptional, getting a job at the university that way, and I think he had to also study to get his master's degree. I'm not sure if he's going through a PhD now because I haven't talked to him in a long time, but he went through that process and he got that job and he, he, he knows his English, my, my God. His English is so good that I think if you talked to him and you didn't know him and you just talked to him in English, you would assume he was British because his, he, his English is British English, but you would assume he's British because his accent is just so good. And I, I respect him. His name is John and I, I respect the heck out of him and I, I am very proud of what he did because really that's not the norm. People don't do that here. And I guess a, a future moral for everything I'm going to say is that you could probably assume that a lot of people, because they don't do that, that's why they're in the situations they're in. But I don't think everyone is in the same boat in the sense that they all studied as hard as he did and got that scholarship and everything. And um, there are other people who studied well and they just don't have the, the opportunities that they deserve because the market is oversaturated. And that's part of my conversation here. I think that, and I guess that's just reality everywhere, because there are so many people studying to become everything, and it's not just doctors, it's not just teachers, it's not just architects. There's so many people studying to become everything that of course the market is oversaturated. And this leads into the mentality that I wanted to talk about. The thing that I, I think I finally get with, with everything that's happening and the reason why I get why people go down the path that a lot of people would assume that no one would go down, I guess. And I, I guess it depends on who you are. And it's the fact that people here, like I said, they're working as taxi drivers, they're working in things that don't make sense for what they studied. There's even the joke that a lot of people, like I said, the doctors, they become taxi drivers. There are people who say, hey, if I don't get a job in my career, I can at least sell bon ice, which is like popsicles um, or ice, ice sticks. Um, but it's a brand, bon ice, that people, you see them selling out on the streets uh, on a little cart and they sell it. I, I really don't know if there's big money in that because there are people who, well, before it was more common. Nowadays, I see it less. You see it more outside of high schools, of course, because a lot of kids get out and they want to buy a bon ice and a little popsicle, and it costs like 50 cents, I think. Um, maybe less, maybe more. I can't remember, but I don't know if it's big business for them. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's what happens. And I, it makes sense that people wouldn't want to study university, college, or get higher degrees if they know that there's no guarantees in their field to get a job. Of course, you can always say that, okay, if you can't get a job at a hospital, at a clinic, at some medical center, if you're a doctor, if you're an architect, if you can't work at, I don't know, a place where architects work, I'm sorry, that I don't know where architects work or if they just have to be independent. If you're a lawyer, if you can't get into a firm, I guess you could go by yourself. I mean, there is that option. But the truth of the matter is that's not always something that a lot of people find viable. And that's not always something people can do. Not everyone is made for marketing themselves and starting their own business. And we can get into this argument of it's their fault then, but that's not fair <laughs> because not everyone is going to be perfectly modeled to be another, I guess, entrepreneur, businessman, and be able to, to do things in their career that you or someone you know might have been able to do. We can't categorize everyone in that same 
boat in that same category, categorized category, forgive the redundance. That's a harsh reality and it's understandable to me even more so now after I talked about it because I've always thought about it. I'm like, you know, but you could study your, your you can study in college, you can still get your degree because that's what I did. I mean, I'm doing YouTube, I make these podcast episodes. Um, I'm a content creator. I don't want to say influencer, but I'm a content creator. And it's not like I didn't study in university. Like I said, I am a teacher and I am a graduated teacher, someone who studied to become one. I could have gotten jobs without being a graduated teacher because knowing English in a country that's primarily Spanish speaking opens up a lot of opportunities if you put yourself out there. I don't want someone to come over here and say, oh, A said that uh, I can get an opportunity as long as I know English. No, you should know English. You should also practice the things that are necessary to become a teacher, grammar, sentence structure, uh, vocabulary, understanding, a lot of different things that you might not think about as a native English speaker. When I was in the States, I didn't think about it either. I just spoke English because I spoke English because everyone spoke English. But now that I'm over here and as the years passed and when I studied and as I practiced as a teacher, I understood grammar is important to a certain extent, to a certain degree, and you should know it if you're teaching it because kids ask the question all the time, why is this the structure? And once you know grammar, you can explain it, not just because that's the way I know it. But anyways, I digress. Uh, the situation is that people nowadays, they're not opting to study in college, in universities. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who are studying university. But a lot of people complain about the fact that there's a lot of young people, kids, or even older people who are online and they don't want to study university. They want to become creators, content creators influencers, YouTubers, TikTok stars, and I think that's, in some ways, that's kind of sad if you don't market it correctly. Like, I understand the TikTok stars who have their own products and who take advantage and get sponsorships and do really cool things, but the people who are just going out there and doing these lame pranks, hurting people, and just being terrible people all around, I mean, clout, <laughs> means nothing if you're a terrible person. So my take on that. And um, I understand it now. I understand why people would want to go down that route because it, it just makes more sense for people. And this is just in the, in the find work part because there's also the, pa the part where it makes more sense for people to become a creator because it doesn't completely take away your whole life. And we'll get into that in a bit. But first, going back to the fact that there are people who can't find a job in the thing that they studied at, could you imagine studying four, five years of your life and you don't get a job in the thing that you studied to become? You would be mad, you would be sad, you would think that life is unfair, you would think that, oh, they, they have connections, which is very true over here. But you would be really upset with that kind of situation because I mean, what did you study for? If you studied to become a doctor and you became a taxi driver, if you studied to become a doctor and you became something that wasn't a doctor. And I'm not hating on taxi drivers. I think that they have a very tough job and they deal sometimes with very stressful people. And I understand why they're stressed because they have to go out on these streets. And, I, and I'm just talking about Ecuador and the States. My God, those streets, I've seen pictures and they're just packed. My friend from Florida, he always tells me, that, well, he used to tell me more when we talked a little bit more for some time, that for him to get to a place that if you drive, it would take you, I guess, maybe an hour. It took him like two hours or three hours in order to get to that place because the streets are just so packed with cars that you just can't get to the place that you want to get to easily, even if you're driving a car. Sure, you get there comfortably, but if you have to take like, three hours when it could have just taken you one if there weren't so much traffic. I mean, kind of makes you think maybe I should walk or maybe I should use a bike. That's why I love how some cities in some parts of the world, they have these like integrated bike streets. Like, I don't know what they're called. I'm just calling it an integrated bike street because it's a street where there's only bikes. 
and it, it looks really cool. I mean, it's, it's a lot more, I guess, free in the sense that you're not being like held back by the millions of cars that are in your way. But I guess you could argue that, oh, but I don't want to get this place to this place sweaty or, oh, I, I don't like doing exercise, which too bad for you. I think exercise is a great thing to keep your health uh, good, <laughs> well. But it, like I said, like I was talking about, I, I keep digressing. The fact that people are going into this space of becoming content creators, influencers, uh, people who just do online things, they don't even have to make videos. They can just be really good at Instagram. And I don't think it's just being attractive. It's also being able to be consistent with posts, being able to understand who you're reaching. And of course, if you understand your market, you can sell something to that market. The point being, it's understandable that people would want to go that route because even if it's not guaranteed, it's better than, than going, well, for some people, it's better than going to college and feeling like the thing that you did meant nothing. And like I said, since it's not guaranteed, even in the influencer content creator space, it, it, it does seem kind of ironic that I would say it as like, oh, this is why they do it. But then we go into the other part of this argument and the reason why people are willing to make that sacrifice in comparison to the maybe the university sacrifice. Even though I feel like they both kind of end up in the same way if they go well and if they go poorly, there's the fact that a lot of people, and I'm guessing, I, I'm not really sure how to talk about uh, the generations, but there's a lot of people who see the opportunity to not have to hurt themselves, kill themselves, and um, in a nine to five. And obviously when I say uh, kill, it's not like literally die, but in the sense that they're overworking people in a nine to five, and it just, the compensation doesn't let you live your life the way that you would want to. There's, I don't think, at least I, I there, there's probably one person who is gonna say me, but I don't think that there's anyone in this world who wants to work a nine to five for minimum wage and is happy about it. I understand that there are people who work a nine to five with a minimum wage because they have to. But the point being, that I don't think there's anyone who's out here never wanting to have free time because they work and the work that they do doesn't give them enough to have free time, to be happy, to go out with their friends, to buy the things that they want. Sure, some of them can buy the things that they want, but then they can't really enjoy them because they're always working, they're always busy, they're never free. So it, it, it's understandable that someone would want to find an, an out to that go into the creator space, which is very fortunate. I recently heard arguments because there's been this whole YouTubers leaving YouTube situation. The one that I keep remembering is MatPat. And it's not like I've watched his content. I, I recently watched one video, but not even because I knew he was leaving, but because it just showed up in my feed and it was something I was interested in. I, I kind of get it because of the things that they explained, but at the same time, I find it weird because it's, it's also something that I feel if you want to make it sustainable forever, you could. But I, I also get it. It's weird, but I get it. Because their explanation is good in the sense that, and this is something that someone else talked about, a dream job is still a job. No matter how good the job is and how much you love it, it's still a job. No matter how much, for example, I, I've come to love editing, but no matter how much I love editing, it's still a job. It's still something that takes away, on average, at least eight minimum. Like we're talking about like really fast edits that maybe I didn't need to do much and maybe I just needed to add some text and a few things to 24 hours plus. And that's just for my videos. I, I can only imagine someone like Mr. Beast who has <laughs> hours, like thousands of hours of footage, how long it must take his team to, to edit that. If he had to do that, he would have probably gone crazy. But that's why he has a team for it. And I also heard, um, and like I said, this is a privileged job. And that's why I also heard from one of my favorite YouTubers, but well, my favorite ASM artist, but one of my favorite YouTubers, 
tiptoe tingles and she even said it's a dream job that you, you have to accept that it's something that people are privileged to do if you get to that level because obviously like I also mentioned in my update to the crisis video personal Ecuadorian situation it, it's not like I'm breaking bank and it, not every content creator breaks bank from views on YouTube and I don't even know if the creators that I mentioned right now on just views alone, like they could manage to, to live the lives that they want to have or they could have. I guess if you know, we are looking to be a millionaire, you could be that. But I don't think it's just views alone. You need sponsorships, you need to sell a product, uh, you need things that help make that manageable. Because if not, I mean, views alone, unless you're getting 40 million views a video, and you're making a video every day that gets 40 million views. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but like, you, you get what I mean. It's not like something that's just like, oh, I make a video, it's gonna get a thousand views and I'm gonna be rich. That's, that's not the way it works. So anyways, I'm, I'm, I, I went off into this tangent of creators exiting the space, but it's also true that people entering the space are, are just trying to reach that level where they can be successful and they can have a fun life and not have to overwork themselves all the time. Being, being successful in something that you love to do, I think is the ultimate goal for anyone doing any job, not just creation, but imagine football players. I don't think anyone playing football is playing football because they're being forced to play football. They must love it in order to do it for so long. Same thing for policemen, same thing for people who are government officials. Although, well, there I, I can't speak for government officials because I have been told that they are liars. And at least from what I've been able to see in my short lifetime, yes, they do seem like they, like, they enjoy lying a lot. But anyways, the point being when you do a job that is your dream job, you're of course a lot happier than doing a job that you're not happy doing. And I understand why people want to get into this space. And I understand why people feel like it's, like I, I understand why people complain about it because for people who aren't used to seeing that kind of success for something that looks easy, like I could, I could imagine someone who's never watched a YouTube video or never really seen the process to make one and they hear that a YouTuber makes, let's say a million dollars a month. I don't know if that's realistic or not, but let's just imagine like someone hears about that. Someone who's like 60, 70 years old, who's never, ever, ever, ever seen a YouTube video, never, ever seen anything that's related to content, but they've worked a nine to five their whole lives and they just had a difficult life overall. They would think it's crazy to believe that someone who points a camera records is earning more money than them who spending who spent a nine to five their whole lives to make the living that they had and never even once made a million dollars even worse in a month so it's understandable that someone like that would be very frustrated to see that but for someone else like for everyone looking at it at a current the current ages like like i said earlier about generations they're looking at it as an opportunity and once again, you can say that, oh, but you can have the same opportunity studying these five years of university because you could get a job that gets you hundreds of thousands of dollars per month, per year. I don't know, depends on where you're at, what, you're, what you think is ideal. Over here, $100,000 a month is oof, crazy money. <laughs> It'd be really great. Um, in my mind, I think with $1,000, it's really good over here. At least good enough to say you're, you're at peace with the environment and with the current economic situation. Although, well, maybe nowadays it might be a little, like if you wanna be super happy, $2,000. If you just wanna be okay and not have to stress and just work a normal life, yeah, $1,000. Could be fine, depending on which city you live in, of course. But the point being that I can understand how people would see those five years and be like, but what if I don't get a job at the thing that I enjoy doing? And then they would see, YouTube content creation as a career and they'd be like, oh, if I do that and maybe in, in less time than five years, I'll get 
a million subscribers and I'll be making $100,000 a month by only recording two videos per month. I, I'd really, like I said, I don't know how much exactly uh, the big creators, what they have to do in order to, to make bank. I'm guessing if they have sponsorships and stuff, there's more, but like, like I'm saying, the point being that I can see how someone's eyes would just sparkle at the idea of that being a reality. And I get it more every day, and not even because my channel is quote unquote successful. It's successful to the point where I feel like I'm giving value, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and I can make a little bit of passive income, at least to combine with my normal income in order to not feel like I'm poor. Like I feel like I'm poor, but not like to the level where I'm living out on the streets. And of course there's factors that help me sustain that, that of course aren't realistic for other people. But the point being that I can understand why someone would wanna go down this path, even if it's not, you know, what everyone else would believe to be the ideal path, at least like I said, generation-wise, what other people would, would believe to be ideal. Like, it still kind of frustrates me because I saw this news report of this kid who broke a record. I don't know his name. And he broke a record by beating Tetris, which no one thought was possible. And he beat Tetris. And this lady on news, like, said that he should be out touching grass, doing exercise, or she wouldn't have her kids do that. And I'm like... Let the kid have fun, let the kid enjoy it, let him be successful in the future because what he's doing is building up a future where now that he's known for Tetris, now he could be known for so many other things. Sometimes the things that you think are dumb, because I didn't think that Tetris was dumb, I just never thought that Tetris would be an outing for someone. But he is now well known for beating Tetris. So now he could get he could make streams doing other things. He could make content about why he decided to do that or how he reached that level. Uh, he could do a lot of things. And now people are gonna like, like go at him and like it's gonna be like really good for him in the future. So instead of bringing someone down, why not see the positive side to what this person is doing? Anyways, what I'm trying to say with all of this is the fact that don't, don't think of content creation because I know there's a lot of people who are like, it's not fair or oh content creators get so much money and I don't get that same amount and it's like we all have something that we do or that we would want to do and we would we would want that thing to make us the money that we want it to make us and if you're not doing that then consider trying to get it done uh, and I know that's easier said than done I'm not saying it like oh you can just go out there and do it instantly but it's better than than sitting there being a keyboard warrior and being like, why do you make so much money when I don't make that much money doing a nine to five? There's no point in that. What you should do is try to achieve your goals. What you should do is, is do what you think is best. I am concerned, of course, for the people who, who go down the creator route and they don't have a backup, like university studies, like maybe a job that's going to help them so that being a creator isn't like their only thing and then once that doesn't work they're doomed but at the same time I guess that's business risk reward I don't remember what it's called if you want reward you have to understand that there's risk involved with it like if you want to go down the easy path like easy you could go work in a McDonald's and a Burger King and a fast food chain you could work there, earn a living, and I guess have money, but is that going to make you happy? I keep remembering that comment from Fall Off The Map where he said that, are you really happy with you know, your life in the place that you're at? And in that same way, I'll ask, are you happy with the job that you have or had or will have? Is what you're doing leading you towards the thing that's going to truly make you happy? Like even in my position, like I studied to be a teacher and I can't say that I'm 100% happy being a teacher. The ironic thing is I'm more happy being a teacher, teaching about the things that I do over here, the life over here in Ecuador, uh, sometimes teaching Spanish and um, I guess talking about things like being kind of a vlogger at the same time being an informative channel 
and even at sometimes being a news source because sometimes I can give news about what's happening here because it's primarily in Spanish and I can translate it into English. But it's not like that's the ideal thing for me. Well, in YouTube it is. And teaching it on content and stuff like that, it feels a lot better than just normal teaching when I'm in a classroom. And it's not like I don't enjoy teaching in a classroom. It's just there are factors that make it better and make it worse. Like when it's better, it's when the students listen, when there's a group that participates. When it makes it worse, it's when the students don't want to participate, when they don't listen, when you feel like you're just speaking at a wall, like you're just talking to, to the ceiling, you're just like, like no one's listening. That sucks. That's, that's really terrible. That's a really terrible position to be in as a teacher. But for everything else, like it's not terrible. I just wish it were better. I wish it were better paid because then that, that's also a factor that drops the motivation for someone to do the job that they do. If a job kind of sucks, but it pays well, at least you can go home and tell yourself at least the job pays well. But for people who don't even have that, it just sucks overall. <laughs> and I understand it. I get it. Because a teacher doesn't exactly break bank either. So, and it, even worse in Ecuador. So it's like, I get it. And what's worse is that you could argue that, okay, if you're not getting a job as a teacher, a good paying job, and if you want to get paid better, why not study to become a master? Master's degree, why not study to get your doctor's degree? But like, if you're talking to the person who's going on the content creator side, do you think that if they don't want to go through five years to get a job, that they're going to want to go through 10? And I'm exaggerating maybe, it's probably not 10. I think the master's degree can take one or two years. The doctor, it, I think, takes also another two years. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just, I don't have a doctor's degree, so I've never really investigated too much into it. But imagine, they don't want to spend five years, what are they going to want to spend more than five years to get that? It, it definitely feels better to make that risk over here. It feels that way. I'm not saying it is better that way. It just feels that way. So, you know, calm down. But even in my position, I feel like I could do my master's. Like I could try to get a master's degree and I've contemplated it many times, many, many times. But I remember before my motivation to get a master's degree because there was some time that I wanted to get it. My motivation was to get a job at the university. But then, like, a year passed after that because I had talked to a friend about it. He was like, yeah, let's get our master's degree, then they'll hire us at the university. A year later, maybe two, and now it's like, master's degree means nothing. They're not going to hire you unless you have the PhD. Like, so then what was the point of studying the master's degree? It feels that way. Like, from a personal perspective, it feels that way. Like, what was the point of spending that time and it's like, it, it's frustrating being in this position and like wanting to, to get ahead by doing something that you feel should get you ahead only to then find out that you have to do something else. It feels like every time you have to do something else to get ahead. And it's not me being lazy. And, don't, and, and it's not like anyone who goes through that route is inherently lazy. But once again, the comment, are you happy doing what you do? Like... Of course, if you're studying or doing something that you love, like, cool. But for me to say that I'd be happy being a teacher at a university where they're going to exploit me because I have heard about the way that teachers work. And the, the good thing is that people listen to you in the university because they have to. Students have to listen to teachers at the university. It's not like high school where students, uh, they don't listen to you and somehow they pass. Somehow they pass. And here's me flashing money because that's how they pass. But it's not like that. In the university, yeah, they listen to you. But even then, like, I'm not 100% satisfied just being locked into having to teach one thing all the time, the same way, repetitively. I love YouTube. I love content creation because you can do different things and you can have more fun with it than if you just teach all the time. Like I said earlier, I teach about life here. I teach about what the situation is, I can talk about news, I can make vlogs about something that we did, like that fair vlog, 
I wish I could make more videos like that. It's just dangerous to make them, of course. But I wish I could make more videos like that because they're so fun. They're so fun to make. And I, I can't see myself having that kind of fun being a teacher. If that makes me lazy, like if not wanting to dedicate my life to being a teacher makes me lazy, then hey, I'll be lazy. But I feel like there's always a better way. I feel like if I want to be happy, I have to do things that, that make me happy. And of course, I'm going to do things out of necessity, like working two jobs and possibly three in the future. And Well, I technically already do work three jobs because I do get side hustles teaching from time to time. So it's like I do get those jobs as well. And technically, they would be four because at the academy where I work at, I'm not only a teacher, but I'm also the video creator for that academy. So I make videos for, you know, the page that show off the academy's abilities. So it's like I could keep working more like that and I will have to, but if I could just focus on content, believe me, I would. And I'd have a much better time than I am right now. And I could probably do much more things for the people around me. But like someone that I know, family member, once told me, you can't help others if you can't help yourself. So if I'm not in a good position, there's no way for me to help everyone else. So anyways, the point of all this being, and, and I want this to be a sort of takeaway for everyone who maybe hates on content creators or who maybe doesn't understand content creators or why they earn so much money. Content creation is not just making a video, recording, and done. Content creation is videography. It's editing. I don't know if they're both intertwined, like the same thing, but videography, editing. You have to write scripts because you have to know what you're going to talk about. Of course, you could just point a camera and just speak. But if it's not coherent, people are going to realize that and it's going to feel weird when they're watching. You have to market because you have to understand marketing. Like if you don't put your videos out to the right audience or if you make a bunch of random videos, then you're going to reach no one. <laughs> one of my favorite Sean Cannell quotes, if you try to reach everyone, then you're going to reach no one because at least the algorithm doesn't understand that. It doesn't, like if you, if you make a doctor video one day and you make a architect video the next day, it's going to be like, huh? <laughs> so it, it just, you have to do a lot of things in order to be a creator. It's not necessarily easy, but it's a lot of fun once you get used to it. It's a lot easier once it becomes fun than just doing your nine to five. And that's why I understand why a lot of people want to do it. And the people quitting, I understand why they want to quit because any job, like we said earlier, any job, even if it's a dream job, is a job. So eventually work just becomes your life. I find myself talking about YouTube all the time with my friends, like explaining niche, explaining why my videos aren't doing well. It's not that it's a bad video, it's just, I would suck at making thumbnails and I'm really, really bad at making titles that make people curious. I'm getting better, I think. Every, every upload makes me better and I can always change the thumbnail and the title. But it's like I have to get better in order for it to be successful and I'm always just talking about YouTube, 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 YouTube. And it's, it's, just, it's just that. I understand why creators want to get out of that. They want to be able to hang out with their friends, not think about YouTube, not always like you go to a place and you feel like I have to record something because I'm, I'm, maybe I'm making an expense. Like maybe I went to, for me, maybe I went to keto and keto cost me $500 to go to. Oh my God, I have to make back those $500. I have to make a video. I have to make, well, for me, it would have to be how many videos would I have to do in order to earn $500? Maybe like 20 videos plus because I don't get a lot of views. But if I got more views, then obviously it would be less. But like you, you just get into that mentality where you just have to constantly do something in order to justify what you're doing that should theoretically be fun. So it, it's, it, it's understandable. I get it. But anyways, the point being, I don't want anyone to hate on creators. I don't want anyone to not understand what the creator space is about. The creator space is an outlet 
for you to have fun with the things that you love to do. And if that eventually becomes a job or if your purpose is to make that into a job, then of course you have to learn a lot of skills. Of course it's going to require a lot of dedication. Of course it's not going to be easy because it's, it's not just point, press a button, record, finish recording, upload, I'm a millionaire. That's not how it works. It's a lot of work and I'm really appreciative for every, I'm really appreciative to everyone who takes the time to watch the things that I do, the things that I say and is interested in what I have to say because as creators we appreciate it when people appreciate our work because if it weren't for the people, who would we be? That's why I don't understand why there are people who come out and say, you guys mean nothing to me to their audience. Like, your audience is everything. Without them, you are no one. So I'm always appreciative. I'm always thankful for everyone who tunes into my content. I was going to say my comment, my content. And uh, I hope that I can always keep giving value as such. And I hope you can also understand why this is much better than stressing yourself out over a nine to five that you probably would never love. All of that to say that this is the end of this podcast episode and I really hope that you got value, that you enjoyed it, that you came along in this ride of understanding content creation, a little bit of motivation around there, a little bit of, I guess, YouTube information as well that's thrown in there because that's at least the, the platform that I understand a little bit better than the rest. I hope that you join us, join me, for a future podcast episode here in the Ace Talks podcast. And in the meantime, please take care of yourself. Have an excellent rest of your day. And as always, Ace out.